Are you ready for another Union Press lesson? In this lesson entitled Jesus' Claim to Deity, we're going to talk about what happened with Jesus and his disciples. This great discourse that went on between them. There are notes for this lesson. I'll leave a link above my head. Click that link. Click the link that you'll find in the description or in the comment section below. Get your notes, your Sunday school books, and your Bibles. For the Union Press Sunday School lesson is now in session. Join me. Let's go. Join me. Let's go. What in the world was this conversation between Jesus and these Jews that it would take up an entire chapter, the eighth chapter of the book of John? He was claiming to be the deity that he really was, but the Jews were going against him and even calling him names. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Sunday School Lesson as taught by Pastor Rodney Jones. I'm the pastor of the New Nation Anointed Ministries, Church of God in Christ, 1700 West 87th Street in the city of Chicago, 60620. Welcome to you new subscribers and thank you for subscribing to this Union Gospel Press lesson. I also teach the International Sunday School lesson as well. We go over the lessons, keywords and key phrases, verse by verse. If you would like to be notified as we upload our lessons each week, make sure you click that subscribe button, the bell symbol beside it and click all. So YouTube will notify you each week through your email, Bing. He just uploaded another Union Press lesson. We had a very interesting lesson. We're dealing with Jesus' claim to deity. We're in John's Gospel, the 8th chapter, verses 48 through 59. This is February. I know we say February. It's February 7, 2021. I pray that you all like my, my new background. I completely remodeled my office uh, for my subscribers and my viewers. One day I'll give you a whole look as to everything that I've done. Yes, all things new 2021. I'm living in expectation of a move of God. In this lesson, we're going to talk about some of the things that the conversation that Jesus had with and against the Jews. They were trying to really, they entered into a discourse with Jesus, but they really doubted who he said that he was. In this lesson, he was proclaiming to be of deity, and they tried to prove him wrong in such a way, and they could not find a loophole, so they began to call him names like Samaritan or tell him that he was possessed with a devil. But I love how Jesus handled himself in the situation. He was not challenged by their doubts. He was not challenged by their disbelief. He still held his grounds and he still stood and stayed in the battle strong. We got to use this lesson for ourselves in the discourse to see how we should handle those that come against us who speak against us, or who even doubt that we say who we really are. Let's get right into the lesson. John 8, 48, and I'm reading from my notes. So make sure that you download these notes. I'm going to move kind of fast. I'm not going to read all of my notes, but uh, make sure you got your notes. The 48th verse says, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? So the Jews have been going back and forth with Jesus throughout this entire chapter. They tested him when they brought this woman who they said was caught in the very act of adultery. Notice what they didn't say. They didn't say we caught her. They said she was caught in the very act of adultery. And that whole thing went from the eighth chapter from the first verse all the way to the 11th verse. And then Jesus said that he was the light of the world. And the Pharisees uh, said that he bore a witness of himself or even record of himself. And they said that his record or his witness was not true. They challenged him also in the 25th verse as to who he said that he was. Then many believed on him because of his conversation. 
And he turned and he challenged them and said, if you believe on me, if you continue in my word, in verses 30, he said, then will you be my disciples indeed. And then the Jews challenged him and said that they were never in bondage because he said, if you, if you continue in my word, then you would be free and or and you would be my disciples indeed. And then they said, hey, we Abraham's kids, we were never in bondage. And then the conversation continues to go back and forth, back and forth, all the way up to this lesson. Point number two is Jesus said that he proceeded and he came from the Father. That's verses 42 through 47. He said, you are of the devil, your father. The lust of your father is what you will do. Then he said, because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. He told them that they were not of God. Point number three, then they accused Jesus of two things that he was not just to throw back at him. This is where they get into the name calling. They accuse him of being a Samaritan and they accuse him of being possessed by a devil. They said, thou hast a devil. And we're gonna talk about that word hast in a minute. They already told him that he had a devil prior to this. That would be John 7 and 20. They said that because he said that they wanted to kill him. Then they said, thou hast a devil. Look at what Hebrews 12 and 3 says. But consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. This is a good reference to this passage of scripture, what's going on. Many people think that we're, gonna, we're not going to experience some things in life. My beloved brothers and sisters, if Jesus could go through what he went through with the leadership of the church, and we are connected with him, know that we're going to be going through some of the same thing. One of their major problems was they envied him. And we will have many that will envy you. Yes, they're members of your church. Oh, come on, somebody. Point number five. They called Jesus a Samaritan, which is not good to be called among the Jews. Because the Jews and the Samaritans get, didn't get along. Number two is Jews didn't have any dealings with the Samaritans. And this is what the woman told Jesus at the well. You remember that, John 4 and 9. And the Samaritans were really a mixed breed of the ancient Israelites or the ancient children of Israel. That would be 2 Kings, the 17th chapter. And it you will find out what happened when the Jews were taken captive, I believe it was by the Assyrians, and then some of their people came there, and later they made it, and then their children were born, and according to history, they were called uh, the Samaritans. They had two different beliefs. Uh, it, is, it is said that they served the same God, but they had two different beliefs. Their temples were in two different locations, and they just didn't get along. So to be called a Samaritan would mean that Jesus is not a real Jew. It means that Jesus didn't come from David, so he could not have the right to sit on the throne. It also means that he would not have come from Abraham, which means that he would not be a part of the covenant. And which means Joseph and Mary were not Jews as well. It's really what they're trying to get to. And this would jeopardize Jesus' whole purpose of being here on the earth and even at that time. Because they held that Samaritans were not bona fide real Jews. And they just told Jesus that you are not one of us. And he said, or they said, that he has a devil, which means to be possessed with a devil. And the word devil, watch this. It means a small God, small deity, spoken of the heathen gods. The word devil also means an evil spirit. The word devil also means that he would be subject to Satan. So instead of being subject to God, his father, they said he was subject to Satan just by calling him or saying that he has to a devil and the word has means to possess to hold or to have continued possession in other words they're saying that he was led by the devil and even possessed by one verses 49 through 50 jesus answered 
I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Jesus replied with two major statements. All he hid him below the belt and he brought truth to the table and they still didn't recognize truth. First, he says, I do not have a devil because I honor my father. Watch that. Point number two, he says, I do not seek my own glory. Watch that as well. We're going to talk about that. Point number two is Jesus said he does not have or is not possessed by a devil. And he gives the reason why. He says he cannot honor his father and have a devil at the same time. And the word honor means to esteem, to reverence, to show respect. Jesus honored his father through respecting his will. You cannot honor God if you do not obey God. You cannot honor God if we're not subject to God and to his word. It's not about how you feel. It's about what he said. Come on, somebody. This is a message to us that we cannot have or do both. A demon-possessed person cannot honor God, and a person that honors God cannot be demon possessed because they are completely opposite one to another and honoring God includes being subject and obedient to his will. He said they do dishonor him and the word dishonor means to despise, to treat with indignity, to disgrace, to treat shamefully and throughout this entire chapter they were dishonoring him. Then he says I seek not my own glory. Now the word seek means to search for, to strive, to find. Jesus was not looking for self-glory. He was not looking to bring honor to himself. He was not even trying to impress them. He was doing the will of his father, and his father would be the one that would glorify him. And this is from the proof that he is not influenced by another spirit. Point number six is God would take care of the glory of Jesus and he is the judge of it all. Either Jesus is saying God can judge the matter as a judge as to whether or not I'm bringing my own glory, seeking my own glory, or seeking my own praise, or he's saying God is the ultimate judge, and in the end of the matter, he will bring judgment against those who do not accept his son. Whatever the case may be, God is the judge. Number two on that one is Jesus knows that his will is to do the will of his father. And lastly, he does not operate to get the people's blessing, the people's honor, the people's anything. He's operating because he is doing the will of the father. So he is not out to seek his own glory. He's not trying to seek his own praise. He's not trying to seek his own honor. He doesn't care about what man says. He cares only about doing the will of the Father. Let me holler at somebody right quick. I don't have my holler at your camera, but I'm going to hook it back up. We need to find ourselves doing the Father's will, regardless of who doesn't like you, who goes against you, who doesn't believe that you're real. You don't need man to certify who you are after God have called you to do a work for him. Verse number 51. Verily, verily, I send to you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Now, Jesus enters into a, a very, very serious truth at this moment. He used the term verily, which also means truly. So Jesus gives them a way out of their present life and offers them salvation right before their face. As a deity, he can do that. Yes, he says, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I send to you. Jews use double words for double emphasis, emphasis or urgency. Saul, Saul, Moses, Moses, verily, verily, I say unto you. Now he says, if a man keep my saying, the word keep means to keep an eye on. It comes from a word which, which really means warden. Yes, warden, which means to watch and hence to guard, to keep or even to obey. He says, if a man keep watch or obey my saying, a word for saying would be word, 
both the act of speaking and the thing spoken, or he's talking about his teachings. If you keep my teachings, if you keep my saying, if you keep my instructions, if you keep, if you honor, and if you obey my commands, he says, you will never see death. Now watch this. He says the word, uses the word see, which means to look at, to watch closely, to perceive, or even to experience. He says, if a man submits, accepts, receives, and obey his command, they will not die. Salvation is centered around receiving Christ and his words because believers do not die. They enter into a stage of rest until the rapture. Verse 52, then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead and the prophets and thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste death. Now notice how they said taste death and Jesus says, see death. They said to them again, they repeated unto them again, now we know that you have a devil. Now this is possibly the third time they have accused Jesus of having a devil, being led by, being guided by, being influenced by, or being subject to Satan. This is about the third time. They said to them, him, because Abraham is dead and the prophets, yet you're saying to us, if a man keep your saying, he will never taste death. Uh, uh, many would challenge us and accuse us of something else for the same reason. And I said that is because since what Jesus is saying is too good to be true, they don't believe him. And many would challenge us and accuse us of something else else for the same reasons. Every believer must stand on truth and not be moved in spite of what others may say. The Jews, once again, they accuse him of having the devil. They cannot find any untruth in his doctrine, so they enter into name calling. They spend their try time trying to insult Jesus, but to no avail because he didn't move. It wasn't bothering him. And oftentimes what people say against us, as long as you know truth and the truth, it should not bother you. Don't be challenged by what people say, misjudge. Forget about your haters and focus on your mission. The Jews said, taste death. And the word taste means with the meaning of to eat or to partake. They saying, so you saying that uh, Abraham is dead and the prophets are dead, but if, if, if we obey you, you saying we won't partake in death? Are you serious? Now watch what, how this conversation goes. The first 53 says, Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead, whom makest thy, thou thyself? Abraham has been dead and been dead for many years. Yet Jesus says, if a man keep my saying, he won't die. They questioned him as to whether he was greater than Abraham or, or the other prophets. They said God was their father as well in verse 41. And they called Abraham their father. But Jesus said that they were of their father, the devil, which is verse 44. Jesus said, if Abraham were your father, you would do the works of him. Verse 39. Then he says, or they said, whom makest thou thyself? They accused Jesus of making himself somebody that he was not. They asked him, who are you pretending to be? They wanted to know, are you greater than Abraham? He's dead. Because they always wanted to associate themselves with Abraham. We're going to mention that again because it's in my notes. Verse 54 and 55. Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Interesting. Let's look at the Amplified Version. 
Jesus answered, if I were to glorify myself or magnify or praise and honor myself, I would have no real glory for my glory would be nothing and worthless. My honor must come to me from my father. It is my father who glorifies me, who extols me, who magnifies and who praises me of whom ye say that he is your God. So look at his reply. He says, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. If I sought my own glory and praise, or if I do what I'm doing just to bring honor to myself, it is worthless. If Jesus was doing this to honor himself, he would not be honoring his father. If he was doing this to honor himself, the Jews would be correct. We don't preach to honor ourselves. We don't run revivals to honor ourselves. We don't teach Sunday school to honor ourselves. We don't do the will of God to honor ourselves. We don't even have Sunday school on YouTube to honor ourselves, but to bring glory to God. And God would do the glorifying of his people when it is time for them to be honored or to be praised by God. Point number two, he says, it is my father that honors me. And the word honoreth means to ascribe glory or to honor or to anyone. To ascribe glory or honor to anyone. Praise or celebrate. Jesus came to honor his father and his father will honor him. Jesus said he received not honor from men anyhow. That would be John 5 and 41. And we should not do things for honor of men. We have our reward if we do. That would be Matthew 6 and 1. Ye say he is your God. Because the Jews did proclaim that God is their God. Yet they do not honor him or his son. Point number six is, he says, yet ye have not known him. And the word known means to know in a beginning sense. That is to come to know, to gain, or to receive a knowledge of. They never knew God. They have never known the Father, and they were never apparently acquainted with the Father. They don't even have a clue as to who He is. And had they known the Father, they would have known the Son also. It's also what He was trying to let them know. Point number seven is Jesus said, if I don't know him, I would be a liar just like y'all are. Oh, low blow, uppercut is what he just gave them with truth because he cannot deny himself. He says, but if I, but I know him and keep his saying, Jesus has always kept the sayings of his father and everything he did always line up to the will of his father. And that's why his father never said no. Verses 56 through 59. Ready? Let's go. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Am. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and so passed by. Interesting that Jesus called Abraham their father. He doesn't go into name calling when he told them that they were of their father, the devil. That was not a name calling. That was the truth because they operated just like he did. And the Jews considered it an honor to be connected with Abraham. That would be John 8 and 39. Not only that, but they did say that Abraham was their father, John 8 and 39. Point number four is Jesus said, Abraham rejoiced, watch with this, he rejoiced to see my day and saw it and was glad. The word to see means to have a view or even a conception of. It doesn't really mean to see at all times with the physical eye, but you can see by faith, you can see in a vision. And that's what prophets did 
they saw uh, uh, we call the eagle eyed prophet, which is Isaiah. He saw some things. He saw Christ on the cross and he saw him suffering. Yes, but he never physically saw it when it came to pass because he had been dead and gone for hundreds of years. Look at the word. Key word is my day, my day, which is the day of the Messiah, which was standing right in front of the people and they could not see it because they were rejecting him at the time. Abraham was filled with joy while these Jews were filled with envy and disbelief. And Abraham had a foresight of Christ. Take your time and read Galatians, the third chapter, verses seven through nine, and you'll see that he did have some type of foresight of Christ. And Abraham saw it. He saw the finished work of Christ on Calvary through and by faith. And Abraham saw the working of the Messiah by faith. And he was told, really, the Lord told him that all nations would be blessed through him. And that would be through his seed, which would be Jesus Christ. The Jews replied to him that you're not even 50 years old. And yet you say that you have seen Abraham. But Jesus didn't say he saw Abraham, but that Abraham rejoiced to see his day. Hmm. So Jesus gave one of the greatest statements to them. He says, before Abraham was, I am. He took us and them back to hundreds of years prior to. He took them back to the fourth generation when Moses was standing at the burning bush and he says, who shall I say sent me? And he says, tell them I am has sent you. I am that I am. And I love this word because the word am means to exist. And what he says is I exist because I exist. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. I am, I am have sent you. Tell him, uh, uh, Abraham, he says, before Abraham was, before he existed, before he was born, before I created Abraham, I am, which means I pre-existed before Abraham was even thought of because Jesus is deity. He is the son of God. He is God the son. He is the second of the triune God of the Trinity. I support the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, I support it because it was Jesus that was being baptized by John the Baptist while God was speaking to him from heaven, while the Holy Spirit was lighting down on him in the form of a dove so that John the baptizer could recognize that this is the one that you are the forerunner from or for. This is a beautiful lesson. If we can just get the people to understand that Jesus is the Christ, he is the Messiah, he is the deity, he did pre-exist. He pre-existed in heaven as the word. He came down here on earth, according to John, as the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God and all things was made by this word, then this word later became flesh and dwelt among us. It's very unique and it's very awesome. And all we have to do is believe. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Make sure you hit that like button. Hit that like button, that thumbs up. If you like these lessons, go ahead and share it. Share this lesson with somebody and let them know that Jesus is deity. This is a, an awesome lesson in John 8, 48 through 59. Make sure you let your students know of the deity of Christ, that Christ was not just an ordinary man. No, he was the actual son of the living God. Yes, he was born through Mary and Joseph, but he was born without the help of Joseph because he was impregnated, or uh, Mary was, by and through the Holy Ghost, and therefore he will be called the Son of God. He is Emmanuel, which means God with us. And if this world wanted to get back to where it ought to be, 
open up our hearts and let the Lord Jesus in. We used to sing a song, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there is no other, for Jesus is the way. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to this channel. And then last, leave some comments. Let's talk about this lesson. What do you know about Jesus, especially about him being a deity? What is it that you like to talk about? What questions do you have? And maybe I missed something or you saw something that's slightly different. I welcome all of your comments, your emails, your text messages. Yes, and even the phone calls to the church because I answer when people call and I love it when they call the church because I tell people if you can reach out to the church, I can reach out to, to answer your call. How do I have that? How do I do it? I have the church line connected to my phone because I am approachable and reachable and talkable. Hmm. I'm done. I'm getting ready to get out of here. Lord willing, if the Lord delay is coming, if the creek don't rise and if it's the Lord's will, I'll see you all next week. Remember my motto, teaching the word of God in the spirit of excellence. The model of the Sunday school, a child saved is a soul saved plus a life. Amen. Join me. Let's go.